we are going to study the subject of what it means to believe and continue our lessons. I'd like to read from Scripture, Mark chapter 11, verse 23, 24. And to start, I'll go to verse 22, which also is included, and it says, Jesus said, have faith in God. Now, this is what he said we should have, have faith in God. For assuredly, I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea, and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that those things he says will be done, he will have what he says. Therefore, I say to you, what... Ever things you ask in prayer, believe that you receive them, and you shall have them. Again, there's something about believing that's required of us. And in this scripture, it's compared or contrasted with the word doubt. And I want to point out a couple of things about this scripture that will help us understand what it means to believe. The words of our mouth, the confession of our mouth, the things that we say have creative power, just like Jesus is saying. You can say to a mountain, and it's going to get up and obey you. We have creative power on our words when, and only when, you believe what you are saying in your heart. If you just say something lightly, twinkle, twinkle, little star, well, that star isn't going to twinkle because you said that. But if you can make a statement believing, I believe my children will be saved, and, and you believe, then th those words have power, creativeness, as you express them. And you hold fast to that confession, and you'll have what you, things you say, Jesus said. But he warned us about doubt. He warned us that we should not give in to doubt. And so the creative power that he's talking about through believing what you say is available only to those who believe what you say. Confessing God's word before you believe it is what a lot of th people should be doing. Uh, because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So if you'll, if you'll rehearse scriptures out loud, if you'll say to yourself, I'm more than a conqueror through Jesus Christ my Lord. And you may not yet believe that as a reality in your life, but that's the word of God. Faith comes by hearing. What better way to hear it than out of your own voice, voice speaking it? And, and the more you say it, the more you hear it, the more opportunity faith will come. And so there's a benefit to speaking God's word even when you realize, I don't think I really have this in my heart yet or whatever. That's a part of the process that will get you there says, believe that you receive, and you shall have. Now, it's a fine line between believing what you see or, or believing what you ask for in prayer, and, and then you'll have it. See, a lot of people say, well, as soon as I have it, I'll believe that I have it. But that's not what Jesus said. Whatever you ask for in prayer, believing, you shall have. So the believing has to come before the having. If we get that turned around, and we expect to have it and then believe it, it never works that way. And one of the things that Jesus was saying here is that as you ask things in prayer believing that you shall receive, he already understands that you do not have what you're asking for. And yet he said to believe and you shall have. And so the, the requirement God puts upon us concerning our believing is different than the way we think about things. So we need a transformation of our soul. Our mind has to be changed or renewed on these subjects to truly understand what is being said here. Because you are to believe, if you look at uh, the, verse 24, believe that you receive them and you shall have them. Believing that you receive something is, again, different than actually having it. I was kind of confused about this when I was studying this. As I first looked at these scriptures, I said, well, how can you believe you receive something that you still don't have? And then the Lord reminded me of an illustration that when I was growing up, we lived on a farm out in a rural mail route. Our mailbox was almost a half a mile from the house. We had a little dirt road out to the highway where our mailbox was. And so sometimes my mother would order Sears Roebuck 
school clothes and other things, and there, there would be a big package that wouldn't fit in our, in our mailbox. And so he'd hang it on the little hook that's on the mailbox, and we've got a package. Now, have we received it? It was delivered to us. See, we've received it, but we still don't have it. Now, what does God ask you to do in this scripture about believing? He says, whatever you ask for in prayer, believe that you receive it. Then you shall have it. In other words, he, using the illustration again, we are to earnestly expect that Sears Roebuck Company will honor our request and money we send to them, and they will send us the answer. And, uh, and so when that package is put on that mailbox, it's our mailbox, what's in that and on that mailbox belongs to us, we have received. But we have to go that half mile and possess it, to have it. Now that's what believing will do. It covers the half mile from your, your house to your mailbox. <laughs> believing is what you do as you move to believe you receive it, then God assures you you shall have it. But you see, you can't just believe for a moment and say, well, I, I'm, I'm going to have it now. No. You have to believe that you receive until you have it in your hand. If that helps you with that illustration. Believe that Jesus said yes to you when you prayed. And if he said yes to you, then he's sent the answer to you. Even though it isn't like a mailbox, you can see it coming, you, you, ha you can believe that in your heart. I asked God in prayer. Jesus said, whatever I ask in prayer, believing, I shall receive, I shall have. And so we, we go step by step, and we get the results that we are looking for. If you aren't responsible for the having part, because God said he would do that. You see, we aren't the one responsible to have the answer to our prayer. We are responsible for believing we receive the answer to our prayer. See, God can't do the believing part for us, and we can't do the having part for ourselves. So we each have a job to do. We are to believe when we pray that we receive an answer. He said, you shall have it. And so he will do his part, we should do our part. Having will follow at some point after the believing you receive has taken place. And the more you understand this process, the less concerned you are about well, how long will it take, how long will it take. Because someone who is believing that they received something isn't real concerned about how long it takes, because it, you already have it in here, and then to see it out here. Uh, every major healing that I've ever had, as I waited on God and heard him say something to me about that sickness or disease, as I heard his word, I could believe his word, what he said to me, and I'd say, that's it, I got it. Still sick as a dog. But in here, something changed. Believing had taken place, and now I'm assured by his word, huh, now, I, now I'll have it. See, Without that sense of believing, we, we aren't assured of an answer. And so I just want to encourage you to exercise your faith toward the words that Jesus said. Trust him and let him bring it to pass. Another scripture, 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 13. It says, and since we have the same spirit of faith, according to what is written, now here's what was written by the, in the days of old, I believed, and therefore I spoke. See that combination? I believed, therefore I spoke. Now, Paul is quoting from the Old Testament when he says that. Uh, he says, since we have the same spirit of faith, according to what was written, I believed, and therefore I spoke. He says, we also believe, and therefore, what? Speak. What did Jesus say you had to do to the mountain? 
He said you had to speak unto that mountain. Paul is saying in this scripture, when you believe, you speak. Faith always has an action. See, faith without an action is dead. But when faith has an action, it is believing. Believing is an action word. And so, words you speak out of your mouth is one of the actions that your faith will take when you are believing. And that's what this verse confirms. It says that it was written, I believed and therefore I spoke. Paul says, and we also believe, therefore we speak. And so the words of your mouth are very important to the believing process. Now what if you believe something and therefore say things that are contrary to what God has said? You have that option, but you will never get God's answers by speaking in a contrary manner to what he's already proclaimed. He says, whatever you ask for in prayer believing, you shall receive. You say, well, I don't believe it like that. I've asked a lot of things and never got them. See, we always make an assumption that what we're doing is sufficient. It's always some other source of fault. Something else went wrong. It wasn't me. Well, you'll have a hard time convincing God of that sometimes according to what he said. And so as we accept his word, we will speak as one of the actions of our faith. Let's read Romans chapter 12, verse 3. Paul wrote to the Romans, he said, For I say, through the grace given to me, to everyone who is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly, as God has dealt to each one a measure of faith. Everyone has a measure of faith. That's what we start with. God gives us that. But then, as we develop the measure of faith that we have, your ability to receive from God is determined by your ability to believe that you receive before you have it. See, we have a measure of faith, but we have to develop and exercise that. And as we do that, we will see answers come to us. Faith and believing are like your muscles. How much faith do we need to get an answer from God? Some people think you've got to have a lot of faith. They look at some apostle or some evangelist or some TV personality and say, Oh, wow, they must have a lot of faith. But you see, that's not how God has expressed it. He said, if you have faith the size of a grain of a mustard seed, which is one of the smallest, you'll work miracles. Faith and believing is like the muscles in your body. We all have the same ones. Correct? We all have the same muscles. Now, what we do with them varies from one person to another. You know, Mr. Universe stands up on stage and flexes all of his big muscles, he doesn't have any more muscles than I do. But he sure has done something different with his than I've done with mine. That's where our faith is. We all have the measure of faith that he is given to the body of Christ. But now what are we going to do with that? If you will exercise it, put it into use, stretch it, uh, stress your muscles against the the things that you need in life by believing, you'll grow. But you don't grow in the amount, you grow in the strength of your faith. Let me turn you to one more scripture in this lesson in Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 1. Here is the Bible definition of faith. The best definition you can come up with is already written here in this verse. Hebrews 11.1, 1, it says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Faith 
is defined in the Bible as a substance. Substances are things that are real. But don't get caught up in what your eyes can see because there are substances on this earth that are solids, like the chairs and things. Liquids, like the water in your water bottle, but also gases, the air that fills this room. Now, if you would go only by the things you can see, you wouldn't know there's any air in this room at all. You could only see the chairs and you could uh, slosh your water bottle around. But you see, there are substances that are just as real that can't be seen with our eyes. And that's what this faith is. It is a substance, but it's not visible to your physical eye. It is a spiritual substance, and it is a substance that is real in your spirit or in your heart. And that's what Jesus said when he said, You say unto this mountain, Be removed and cast in the sea, and shall not doubt in your heart, but shall believe in your heart that the, the things you say will come to pass. You'll have whatever you say. You see, faith works with unseen things. Faith is a substance. You can't see faith. But you can see like the wind blowing down the street and trees swaying and leaves rolling. You're not seeing the wind when you see that. You're seeing the effect of the wind being there. You're seeing the tree move, not wind. And that's what you can see in people sometimes. You can't see the faith that they have, but you can see the effect that faith that is present in them, it produces actions that you can see. Jesus said to a blind person, he spit on the ground, put clay in his eyes, and said, go wash in the pool of Siloam and come back seeing. So this man is walking down the street with mud in his eyes. He's blind. He still can't see a thing. He's going down the street with mud in his eyes this way. Somebody show me where the pool of Siloam is. And he was going to do what God said to him to do. And when he got there and washed, he was instantly healed and came back seeing. But you see, you couldn't see that faith, but you could sure see what that man was doing. And that's the way faith is. You see the result of it being there. Well, guess what? You can also see the result of it not being there. And so faith is a substance. It's tangible. It's, either, it's real. You either have it or you don't. The believing part is if you have it, you have to act on it with words and deeds. If you don't have it, all your words and all your deeds don't create faith. Don't bring you any substance. You know, well, I'm going to do what that blind guy did, put mud in your eyes and go down there. You won't be healed because you can't get faith by doing something. The Bible is very clear. The way you receive faith is faith comes by hearing, hearing the word of God to you. See, And so... Let me illustrate this Hebrews 11.1 1 with a quick illustration. When you're building a house, you have a blueprint before you have a house. The blueprint is what you hope it to be, but then a builder comes and puts substance to that, and then you have, actually have a house. You spread your blueprint out on the ground and go stand on it. How many people will you convince, oh, nice new house you have? No, it's only the hoped for thing. That's what it says. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. Faith is what will put the house up around the blueprint that you hope to be. Let's pray. Father, we give you thanks and praise for this lesson. Help us to understand what it means to believe. Touch each heart and move us from one understanding to another to another. And help us to glorify you on the face of this earth. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen.